Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I created this red lip glam look. So I've already cleansed with the Elemis Pro Cleanse Balm. And then I am going to use this Pixie Glow Tonic to tone my skin. This Glow Tonic has glycolic acid in it, which helps minimise pore size. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my Vichy 89. Yeah, I've changed my parting guys, I no longer have a comb over. So the primer I've just used is the Hourglass Veil Primer. This is really good for that oily skin. My T-zone area is very oily, so I've just focused it on there, just on these areas. You really don't need very much, so it does go a long way. Right, so let's do some foundation. So for foundation, because I'm gonna be out for the evening for dinner and stuff, I wanna make sure this is gonna last. So I'm gonna use one that I know really lasts on my skin. Um, so the one that I find lasts well on my skin is the Bare Minerals Pro. So I'm using the shade Sandstone because I have done about three layers of fake tan. Um, I mean, I'm going out with Natalie, so it's necessary. She's so well. It kind of matches quite well. It's quite dark on this one. So yeah, you need to be pretty tanned. The shade Warm Neutral is quite a good one as well. I either use either or, or kind of mix the two. So I'm going quite... A Full coverage look so I'm going to do more of like a patting motion rather than a dragging motion. Yeah, I'm going to do a red lip today. I love a red lip and I haven't done one for ages. And I don't really like heavy eye makeup on myself anymore. I actually prefer a softer eye look on myself so the red lip's perfect to team with that. So I'm going to use a new brand that I've not tried before. Um, it's lovely lady kindly sent me her palette and some lashes and I actually love the look of them so I'm going to give both of them a go today. I'll probably do a few looks with them as well. I am going to try and keep up my YouTube once a week, even when I do eventually go back to work. So if you have any looks you really want to see, please do let me know. I still need to do my rose gold look, because I had done like a lesson on that earlier on in lockdown. But I think it'd be cool to do a video on it, because it's such a popular look. I don't want to give too many tricks away though. I want you guys to come see me again when I can open. So on the nose area, it often is harder to get foundation to sit nicely. So you can use a sponge on this area, or do more of a patting motion again. How pretty is this packaging though? Oh, I love it. It's gorgeous. Yes, yeah, so this you can see this foundation is very, very matte. Um, but yeah, because I do suffer with oily skin, I do have to go for a more matte foundation if I'm going to get it to last. I do actually prefer how a dewy foundation looks and feels on my skin though, if I'm honest. But yeah, it just doesn't hold very well on me. So because I don't want to look too matte, I'm going to use a bit of the Chartreau Tilbury Flawless Filter, if I can find it. This is quite nice to put on top of your foundation to make it look a bit more glowy, but only on the areas you want it. So because I like that glowy foundation look, but I also know I can't have that on my T-zone, um, this can be quite a good one to kind of give you that glow back from a really matte foundation. So you can either put it underneath or on top or both, depending how glowy you want to go. I'm just going to put it on top, so I'm just patting it with my finger. It just gives some glow back to the skin. Because I have quite textured skin as well, this looks much more flattering than a powder highlight on my skin. So if you have got quite textured skin on your cheeks but you still want a bit of a glow, I would recommend using a cream highlighter like this before you put your powders on. You see it just gives a lovely skin-like glow. But yeah, if I was gonna suggest like an, a must-have product, the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter would be a must have. Look at it, it's gorgeous. When I went to the makeup by Mario class, he actually uses the um, Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream to get that glowy look, but it smells awful. And it's like, it's like lip balm, so it's a bit sticky. So yeah, I much prefer Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter for those glowy looks. I wanted to try a, yeah, cheaper cream contour products. I do get through them quite quickly, so. I really like this one. What is my hair doing? So for anyone who doesn't cream contour, you need to, because it's game changing. So this is the shade F13. I got this one in F14. I haven't actually tried the F14, but I think that would still be quite a good color as well. Ooh, I've got a bit too much on my brush. I like to use a fluffy brush to do cream contour with, because then I can blend it as I go. I've probably put too much product on, but I'll still be able to blend that, it's okay. Um, when it comes to where to place your cream contour, you really want to focus it on where your cheekbones are. So by saying that, I mean, if you don't know or you can't see, 
like have a feel and feel where your natural cheekbones are because if you had cheekbones that were kind of diagonal and you started contouring quite like horizontal you're not going to get that natural looking feel and it's not going to actually suit your face and quite often that's what I do find people contour far too low and actually makes your face look chubbier so make sure you're lifting your cheekbones you're not making them look kind of saggy so even here I've gone a little bit lower than I'd like to so I will have to blend that out in a mo. so to blend it out I'm literally just going to go back in with my foundation brush one thing I would say as well is if you're working with a matte foundation you have to do cream contour quite quickly otherwise you'll end up not being able to blend it right let's do some nose contour I'm actually going to use the same colour. I don't know if it's a bit too warm for nose contour, but we're going to give it a go. Usually I like to use a more ashy colour for nose contour. So for nose contour, I like to do on the tip of the nose, kind of round the tip of the nose like that, on my nostrils, and then down the sides of my nose. And then I just like to blend it out with a foundation brush. If you like a really prominent nose contour, you could actually just use like a small little blush, fluffy brush, but I feel like it just takes off all the foundation when you do that, especially with like a matte foundation like this. Right, I'm going to do a bit of highlighter slash concealer now. This is my favourite stage, makes such a difference. Okay, so I'm going to use the Tarte Shape Tape in shade Light and Light Neutral, as always. So I'm not going to use very much light because I don't want to be too two toned because I am quite tanned. So I'm going to use the shade Light here and the shade Light Neutral along here. So basically if you prefer a more natural look, don't do any more than this when it comes to concealer and just blend this out. If you want to go for a more glam look um, or a bit more coverage, then do what I'm going to do now which is take it a bit further out. If you had someone who was like quite wrinkly, you definitely wouldn't want to put concealer around putting it now. You wouldn't want to put it here because that's just going to highlight any... Um, Crow's feet, so I'm making the most of the time that I can carry on doing that, but when it starts getting too, uh, too wrinkly, I'll have to stop. I'm going to go to the florist tonight for dinner with my gals. Three drinks at Anna's in the garden. I've got my wine ready. So I'm just literally blending in that concealer, and then with what's left, I'm going to take it down underneath the contour, down the bridge of my nose, on my chin. So when I do a red lip, I don't do just one red. I will use like a variety of different red lipsticks, red lip liners, like just a variety of things. So you can see it's literally like just sculpting my face. I literally, literally never wear makeup at the moment. So when I do, I'm like, damn, who is that? Best. I like you appreciate it so much more when you don't do it as much. You also do notice when the lines start coming more though, because, uh... oh, don't, about the guys getting beards done. Oh. Where I draw the line, that is where I get annoyed. So yeah, I, tomorrow I'm going to be filming me trimming my dad's beard, even though I don't have a beard trimmer, so I'm going to have to get some scissors out or something. And then um, doing my mum's eyebrows, both in full PPE, and I'm going to explain how the fact that that is allowed and this isn't, it's kind of silly. Um, I might even point out like a lip wax as well, because a lip wax is basically the same as a beard trim in my eyes. It just means women who have hairy lips can't do anything, but men can. Makes sense. So top tip. Use the Shark Tilbury Flawless Filter after concealer before powder because if you're using a concealer like I've just used, it just takes away any glow which you've already put on, so that's quite sad. We're putting it back on again. That's better. Now I look alive again. I'm going to use the Laura Mercier powder as always. So I learned a new trick recently from um, By Georgina Makeup where she actually sets the face a little bit before putting any baking on, which stops it from like going like cakey and like crispy and like just dry looking basically. Um, so I'm just gonna literally lightly set any areas that I'm gonna bake anyway. So I love the Laura Mercier translucent powder because it's so finely milled. Um, so it kind of airbrushes your skin, it's so nice. It's frustrating because I feel like for me, my favorite kind of makeup look is a really glowy look. I just can't, a glowy look just doesn't last on me. It's really sad. I'll just have to add some glow back in the highlighter later. So baking, I would avoid baking if you have any fine lines um, or if your skin is dry, um, if you're probably over the age of, I'm not even gonna say an age because a lot of people look great for their age so we're not gonna go for that. But just don't bake around this area if you have fine lines because yeah, it's just gonna highlight them. But I'm okay so far, it's okay. 
Let's do a little bit here. So I'm baking down the sides of my nose. So baking basically um, smooths the pores a little bit and it just increases that highlighted look. I would avoid baking with anything that isn't finely milled um, because you'll get flashback. And yeah, if you can, set it beforehand with a translucent powder just lightly. That'll stop you from getting a cakey look. And I'm just dragging it underneath my cheekbone to highlight underneath there. I'm going to use the Tint Lock Serum first. So this is an absolute must if you're getting the brow sculpt treatment, um, which is something I'll be offering very soon. I need to finish my qualification um, in person once they're allowed to open and then I'll be offering it. Um, but I did it on myself the other day, even though I'm technically not qualified, but I know what I'm doing, so it's fine. Um, and they look great, love them, absolutely obsessed with this treatment, I think I'll probably do this every time. Um, it's basically the HD brows process, but it also includes lamination as well. Um, and it's a lot more kinder on your brows than any other lamination products, which is why it's so popular. So this product is basically a brow conditioning serum, but it also helps the tint last longer. So I did my brows earlier on this week. <laughs> I think it was on Monday or Tuesday. Um, and you can see, yeah, the tint's definitely not worn off at all. So my brows are naturally quite a light brown. I tinted them a bit of a mixture of black and brown. So yeah, this Tint Lock Serum is just a serum, but I am using it to brush them up a bit, as you can see. But as you can see, I'm not gonna need too much makeup on them now because of the brow sculpt treatment, which is fab. So I'm gonna use the HD Brows Color Fix. So this is just gonna add even more color to the hairs and help them stay brushed up as well. So you can see I've just giving them a little bit more depth, especially because they've got a bit of foundation on them. Before I had the lamination treatment, my brows would certainly brush up, but they wouldn't look like this. They look a lot more fluffy now. But what I would say is if you're considering at-home lamination while you're waiting for all of us to reopen, please don't. Please be wait. Please wait, because, yeah, too risky. If you get the timing like a minute off, you could end up over-processing your brow hairs. So I wouldn't advise doing it on yourself. I would always let the professionals do that. So I'm now gonna do a little bit of brow pencil. So again, I'm not gonna need much because they are quite full. I'm just gonna fill in any gaps. and I'm gonna follow the direction of the hair. So if you're doing like a fluffy natural brow look, always follow the direction of the hairs. We didn't actually have to take like a whole extra row of hairs. That's the one thing I will say about the um, brow sculpt treatment. If you have really thin brows and you want them to look a lot fuller, the brow sculpt treatment will do that. Like my brows are really full and they looked huge when I finished. So I had to take like an extra row of hairs off otherwise they'd look mental. So um, that's definitely a massive plus for it. So who's booked in for your nails or massage next week? I know I have. My best friend does amazing massages. So I'm absolutely dying to have a massage. My back is in bits. Don't really know why though. It's not like I'm doing anything really strenuous. Although I feel like sitting on a laptop actually does kill your back because you're kind of like hunched. I have the worst posture as well. I really should wear like a waist trainer or something. Um, so I'm just using the Tarte Shape Tape again just to kind of give definite shape there. I do love how effortless it is doing your brows once you've had the brow sculpt treatment, I have to say. So if you're doing this, I'd advise using a concealer brush that is flat and rounded. Like this. this is the P. Louise Acid Rain Brush. So for the eyes I'm going to do quite an ashy brown look. That's kind of my favourite to do when I'm doing a red lip. That's why when I saw this new palette I got today, I thought that brown is literally the spot on brow that I want to use. I feel like a lot of palettes are lacking an ashy brown. So I'm really glad that that was included in it. So I've literally just carved out the brows and gone up to like where the crease of the eye is and that's where I'm going to put an eye primer. So I'm just using the Spectrum AO5 brush. I'm gonna put the blusher on, so I'm gonna use the Becca Snapdragon blush. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's really bright, like a bright pink color. And I like to take my blush out all the way up my cheeks. It's got a very slight highlight in it, this one as well. All right, so I'm gonna do some eye primer now. I'm just going to use the P. Louise base. This is in the shade number two. I'm just going to pat it all over the rest of the eyelid. So I'm going to use this palette. This is the Bridal Box by Laudine Marie palette. I'm going to use this shade here 
which is a, oh you can see my camera set up there, that's weird. <laughs> um, this is the shade, it doesn't have a name, but it's like a ashy light brown. It's like the perfect brown for like a soft eye. So this is my first time using this palette, so I'm super excited. So far the pigment is amazing. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, Carter Beauty palette that I've got. So I'd say this is like a neutral brown. I wouldn't say it's super ashy, but it's also not super warm. So it's the perfect brown for this sort of look. So I'm basically just building up the color in the outer corner of my eye, almost in a sideways V shape, like that. And then I'm blending it out. So the eye look I'm doing today is sort of soft because I'm gonna do a red lip later. I'm gonna just do a kind of brown and gold. Nothing too fancy. So I also really like to take like a colour like this especially, when I'm taking it around the crease, I'm like doing small circles as I go with a really light touch, holding the brush really far down. Please excuse the state of my brush. My concealer's leaked in my makeup bag, so it's gone a bit crazy. Um, so I'm just doing small circular motions, taking it around my crease, and then I'm taking it all the way around the front, and I'm taking it up into the brow here. You wouldn't be able to do this with like every colour, because obviously a blue would look a bit weird in that area, but when it's a brown, a light brown like this, works perfectly because it ties the look together and brings the nose contour and the eye makeup together. And I think that's what I like really soft eye looks because I can do that really easily with them. Yeah, so far so good. This palette is really pigmented. I think it's probably going to be one of my new favourites. This is like a kind of shadow colour I'd probably wear every day. £18. Well that is a bargain. So I'm now taking the shadow out into the face a little bit. Again, because of the colour and the shade of it, you can really take it into the skin because it's not too dark. This is going to create that kind of fox eye look a little bit as well um, and it's going to enhance those temples slightly which will lift your cheekbones more. Do you see what I mean? Because here the eye makeup and the face aren't like connected. It doesn't look as nice whereas this one, you know, cheekbones popping. But you have to make sure you're doing a really light touch when you're taking it out this far because otherwise you might end up with lines. So I'm just going to do a really thin layer of that P. Louise base. Not very much on there, but just something to make it a little bit stickier. I'm just going in with the same colour. This one here. I basically use the same brush and I just press on it. So by taking the eyeshadow underneath, it's going to open your eyes up. I know a lot of people that don't do this and I really don't understand. I do not understand. It makes such a difference. So I've taken it underneath, blend it all out. I'm going to go into a slightly darker brown shade, I think. So I'm just going to use the Stacey Marie XL Carnival palette. I'm just using this dark brown here. So you just want like an ashy dark brown. So normally I do actually go with the darkest colour first. So this isn't going to be that strong. But because I'm doing a soft look it doesn't matter too much. So yeah, if you're ever going to darken an area of the eyeshadow, go the top lash line on the outer corner and the outer edge of the crease is the best place to do. So there's like a highlighter in the Stacey Marie Carnival palette, the new one, the XL. And it is like a gold colour. I'll show you like this. It looks white, but it's like a white gold. Um, and this is just quite good to kind of highlight the inner corners. And I like to kind of use it as a base before I put any pigments on. I'm using a pencil brush. This is the Spectrum A12 brush. These are the best brushes to do the inner corner with, as you can see, it just fits perfectly in the little corner. So I'm then gonna go in with some of my glitter primer and then some pigment. This is the best product you can possibly use when you're doing eye makeup because it literally makes the eyes so sticky so that you can put your glitter on, sorry. So I'm just going to put a little bit on a flat brush and pat it all over this front part of the lid. And I'm going to use the shade Most Wanted and Hollywood from um, Peach and Cream. So I'm literally going to mix the two on like a little palette and then just apply them. I'm gonna blend it out with one of the colours in this palette now. Which one should I use? I think I'm gonna use a mixture of these two here to blend out this colour. Probably more the darker one to be fair. Yeah, I'm gonna use the darker one because it's like a dark gold almost, it's gorgeous. And I'm literally just going between the shimmer and that dark colour. So you can see it's just blending it out and creating like a seamless finish. It's always khaki this colour, it's gorgeous. I'm just going back over with that highlighter from the Be Perfect Cosmetics. 
have it just to very much bright in this front part. So you can see the way that I've done this shimmer, I've taken it a lot higher than where my natural crease is. My natural crease is a lot lower, you can see. But by doing this, it opens your eyes up, makes them look bigger. Tap tip, because my eyes are not big at all. So you can see how that eye look is literally just contouring the eye shape. It's really clever. So I'm going to use some liner on my waterline, I think, because I do love a little bit of my waterline. But I have quite small eyes, so I don't like to use a black. Um, especially if I'm doing a red lip, I prefer to keep the waterline a bit lighter um, for a red lip. So this is the Golden Bronze from NYX. So it's like copper colour. Even though this eye look isn't very warm, it will go really nice on the waterline. So I'm really taking it into the lash line as well. Look at that. Gorgeous. So that really makes my eyes pop without making them look too dark. It just finishes that eye look off really nicely. So I'm going to put a little bit of liner on. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jet in the cream liner. So I'm going to just literally line my lashes. I'm going to do like a smudgy wing, I think. So when you're doing a wing, you want to kind of go from the edge of your lashes towards the edge of your brow. Why are your brows in the right place? Because I mean, right now they may not be. They may be everywhere. So I find this liner really easy to work with. I have a lot of like makeup lesson clients that struggle with liner. Um, and I used to just kind of find it really difficult teaching them liner because they just couldn't get the hang of it. Um, and as soon as I started using this one, they were all like, oh my God, this is so much easier. It's basically really creamy, but it is a gel and it is really dark and it also is long lasting. So it's just like the dream. Day. I honestly got so excited when I thought I was about to open. I even called some people and then I realized I couldn't and I was like, this is great. I've already rescheduled two people. Luckily they were very understanding and sympathetic that I didn't have a realisation that it was actually not including my services. So that kind of sucks. So these are the lashes I'm going to use. Look at that packaging. Oh, I love you. So this is the Bridal Box lashes. So I really like the look of these lashes already because they've got a really thin lash, lash band. They're in the style Marie, these ones, so lash. So it's long, it's wispy, it's kind of got that spiky look. Um, it's just perfect, basically. So for trimming, I always like to trim at the outer edge of my lashes to take the length off, but I also like to trim the inner edge a little bit because I find most lashes have got this little bit that pokes out slightly. And that'll poke me in the eye because I am sensitive Sally. So I trim that off. I'm just going to measure my eye, see how much I need to take off. No, maybe like one little bit. This is the one thing I actually like about not having lash extensions, being able to wear strips. So I'm just gonna put some glue on these lashes. So I'm using the Tatty Lashes glue as always. I have to say, I am really fussy when it comes to lashes. And I only really like the Doll Beauty ones. So I am amazed I actually like these a lot. So I feel like I could be swapping over, you never know. I am sick of Doll Beauty lashes being out of stock, if I'm honest. So it'd be nice to, uh, Try a new brand. Look at those lashes. They are unreal. Super comfortable as well, I have to say. It's as easy as that. They've got like a little bit of a wing to them, which I quite like. That just completes the look, doesn't it? Because I'm doing a red lip, I'm gonna go with a red liner. I don't really actually bother too much with lip liner when I'm doing a red lip because most of it I kind of make it perfect with the lipstick itself. I feel like my natural lashes need to merge with these. They're kind of poking in the wrong direction. Can you not? Right, so I'm going to do a bit of lip liner. So I'm going to use, this is the Kiko number four fine art lip pencil. Oh, just missed my lip in. I'm just going to start underneath. So what I, was, I will say about with a red, when I was at college, we were taught anyone with small lips shouldn't use a red or shouldn't use a dark lip colour. But what I found is you can actually overline your lips a lot more with a red than you can any other colour because it's darker or it's like bolder. So I just don't know if I believe that that much. I think you just have to find the right colour for you. Um, if your lips are small, you probably want to go for a lighter red, like this sort of colour. But I do think you can overline lips a lot more with a, with a red than you can a nude. So I'm just going slightly above where my natural lip line is.
gonna use a darker lipstick to make it a bit more ombre. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of this really dark red. This is the Studded Kiss from MAC. I'm using a hard angle brush. Usually just have one brush that you use for red lipsticks because it does kind of stain them. I'm basically just gonna go over where I just did that lip liner. It's gonna look very dark, but the lip I'm actually gonna do is quite light, but I'm doing like an ombre effect, so I want to use this darker one first. It's almost like a dark browny red. And then I'm just gonna do the same on the top. So by using a hard angle brush, you can get more of like a crisp edge. So I am taking the lips again higher than they are naturally, so I like a nice big juicy red lip. But if you are gonna overline your lips, just make sure you're keeping it in a straight line, you're not kind of making it round. Unless you want to look like Betty Boop. A lot of people are so scared to wear a red though. So if you are, I would try a coppery, orangey red or a pinky red before you try a dark red because that can be a bit scary. I think I'm happy with that. I am going to go around the edges with some concealer as well. But I'm going to go in with... Relentlessly red. This is a gorgeous red. It's like a pinky red. How lush is that? This is a matte. I always like to wear a matte red because I feel like glossy red's just risky because if you've got your hair in it, you'd then like move your hair and it'd get a red line on your face. The right kind of reds can make your teeth look really white, but some reds can also make them look yellow as anything, so be careful with that. So you can see how like that's got like an ombre look now, it's so lush. And then when you're topping up, you only need to use one. I would just use the lighter one to top up. I wouldn't bother bringing the, probably bring the dark one just in case, but I wouldn't use the dark one much because you don't need to. To blend the ombre, it's quite good just to kind of do that. I'm just going to clean up the edges now. So whenever I do a red lip, I like to use concealer to make the edges really crisp because I feel like, I don't know, I don't like it when the lipstick's not just perfect around the edges and it just makes it look so much nicer. So if you aren't someone who's got a steady hand like me, this is a good trick. So you can either use the foundation that you use or you can use some concealer. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a concealer brush and just clean up the edges of that red. So I'm just going over my nose contour slightly. I shouldn't need too much because it's still Quite good. Some highlighter on. I'm just going to use the Doll Beauty Pretty Little Glow. Which is a nice one. It's the PC17 brush from Peaches and Cream. So I like to highlight down the bridge of my nose, on the tip of my nose. A little bit of the Cupid's bow. Probably should have done it before lipsticks. Nib on the chin. All mini, all nighter. There you go. Finished look, red lip with a soft eye. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and make sure you subscribe and leave me a comment.